Okay, so uh, this is the accrual setup page, and this is a bottom to top approach, which means you're going to set your uh, uh, you go you're going to do the setup from bottom, and then you'll gather all this to create an accrual policy. So the first thing we'll be seeing is an accrual code. So these uh, accrual codes uh, can you can think of these as buckets that are either going to hold your money or uh, days this accrual type it can either be money day or hours so i'll i'll give you an example for what a hourly accrual type means so it means that you can have 10 hours per month of vacation time 80 hours per year of sick time or for every 40 hours you work you're getting one hour of time that is earned for your personal time so these uh, hourly codes track the number of hours that can be earned based on other rules or qualifiers uh, you know that you're going to create for an accrual so if you want to have a day type of accrual what this means is your day accrual codes are tracked by days and not the hours so i'll show you an example so they have vacation in hours so they're just simply creating a vacation you will use three uh, letters only to create an abbreviation so this is an r type So you can select hours, days, or money. So if you select hours and save it, you will not be able to make any changes to that uh, any changes to that code. So this accrual code is basically only that it's similar to a pay code, but you're going to use this uh, predominantly for your accrual. So um, you will just you know the setup is very simple. Like you'll just select what type, and are you going to allow manual edits? So which means you're going to create some policy okay so you'll be saying that okay if this person is going to work like this uh, you can pay him 10 hours of vacation uh, but for some reason something has happened which the hr is okay with and she is saying that okay instead of 10 give this person 15 hours of vacation so in those cases you can do an accrual reset which which is why you allow manual edits and the reporting period is your default reporting period like uh, whatever your fixed rule is like if your pay period is a week or bi-weekly something like that so this is your hour type what happens in your day type so in hours you're just adding amount to it so what happens in your day type you're just going to select day and you're going to tell how many um, hours or uh, how many days it has to get accrued so your accrual uh, day uh, codes your day accrual codes are tracked by days and not by hours your day accrual codes are useful for any company policy that does not award time based on hours but it requires full or half days instead so for example a day accrual code might uh, be when a company is going to give an employee uh, day off for their birthday so the company would want to set up a floating holiday or like a birthday award of one day what happens in your money based accrual codes is you will create uh, an accrual code and it will have some balances in it so you can create an interface and uh, add some preset amount to it or you can create some rules but you will use money to give any allowance to your employees in such cases you will need a money accrual code so money accrual codes are set up as amounts earned for certain situations so for example if an employee is given an allowance for uniform or a safety allowance like he has to purchase if he's working in manufacturing he needs some boots right so for that uh, if he needs an allowance for that uh, you he can use this money accrual to uh, encash his uh, thing so if a job requires the employee to provide specific rules there may be a money allowance for that as well so how um, so when uh, naming your accrual codes it is very important to decide that uh, you name it in a way that you will be able to recall it so you these codes are seen by the employee supervisors and managers so the value entered in the name of uh, the field of an accrual code is visible in uh, the accrual tab of the time card section your reports your genies and your time of requests so uh so that's it uh, with this mm, i can add something say okay i'll see if i can pull an employee for you So 
So here you see a tab, right? So this is how your time card is going to look. So once you add a work rule or a payroll, this will calculate accordingly. So I simply added an in and out. So this is where you can see your accruals. Uh, so if I have any accrual code, uh, for, for example, if I'm going to add an accrual code like Okay, uh, I don't think I can add to this uh, employee. So if I add any code, that code can be seen here. So when you click on this date, it's going to show what balance that person is having as of that date. So this is the accrual page uh, with respect to your time card. So coming back to our setup. Um, so I, I spoke about manual edits, right? So when you create accrual codes in your accrual, code editor uh, you have this manual edit checkbox is there by uh, default so this is when this option is selected the system is going to allow users to edit accrual codes using group edits or uh, like wire interface etc so when this option is not selected the system will not allow users to update or reset uh, related accrual balances so this option does not affect the payout option in group edit so you don't have to worry about it but you know just stick to the uh, basics of this so so when you select this uh, in display code on totals and schedule tab uh, this checkbox if this is Uh, this is not selected by default so when you create a new this is not selected by default but if you select this this uh the system will display the balance of this accrual code in the schedule like in the tab that we just saw so if you don't select this you'll not be able to see in the time card there so when you're testing it try to test it uh, that way so there's another option called uh, reporting period right so this reporting period defines the pay period start and stop dates for each accrual this option in this list are populated using date patterns uh, which we'll be seeing subsequently so the next uh, uh, step in this is Okay, I'll, tell, I'll ask some questions uh, based on this. Uh, you can you can answer me for this. So, can you change an accrual code type once you have defined it? Uh, I think no. No, very good. So, why do you use the abbreviation field? The the code with three letters. Why do you use that? Easy to find. Uh, for? Easy to find when we are applying your leave. Uh, no. So there are two things here. So one is you will use this code for your employees to see. You can allow your managers to see full codes, but you can allow your employees to only see these codes. So when you train your employees, you can say that, okay, PTO is pay time off, VAC is vacation, but your manager will know the abbreviation. So you can use this to display this in the time clocks and all. So this abbreviation is for uh, for employees and so. Uh, that, uh, that answer is also correct, but uh, the chrono setup is done for this. So uh, just remember this also. So what is the allow manual edits checkbox to? Uh, it is for editing when we are applying a, a leave, sorry, pay, accrual on uh, time card. That mm -hmm. point is for editing that at the point we are applying on time card. Okay, yeah, that's correct. Uh, so you can also uh, use an interface to make edits to this when you have this manual edits uh, checked. And uh, the abbreviation, no. Uh, so in your, uh, when you run any accrual type of reports you have some reports in, in the chrono system right so when you run any uh, reports uh, that code will be displayed there also so if you don't select this the code will not be displayed there so that's also one more uh, use of it so we'll go to dates and uh, date patterns so oh one second sorry okay so when it comes to dates you have two types of dates you can leave this last one uh, 
just remember these two site wide and person specific so i'll first explain what person specific is so person specific is something that is uh, relative to the uh, person like his uh, hire date or his birth day or his seniority date or or uh, you can say the date he got promoted or his anniversary or something like that so sometimes you want so these are all specific to that person right so his hire date is used for him somebody else is going to have a different hire date so this is specific to the person so those dates are called person specific dates and site wide dates are nothing but these are the dates that are common throughout the company like uh, uh you know like uh, the 1st of january or any holiday or uh, yeah the 1st of january or any holiday or uh, or some other uh, weekly time off days something that's you know common for all the employees so those are your two types of dates site wide and person specific so you will be just uh, you just have to select this to create a new row add your date and you can select where this uh, date should refer to so all these dates you will be importing via your interface and you can view these dates in the person tab uh, via your people editor so the third is date patterns so now you have dates created right so with these dates you're going to create something called as date patterns that you can uh, just give me a minute sorry so you're going to create uh, a pattern with or whatever dates you have so for example you can uh, take a simple okay so we have a default reporting period right so this is uh, already pre present so the reference date is going to be the default site wide date so you have created a default so you have a default uh, site wide date here that is on 1 1 so january 1 is your default uh, site wide date so what your date pattern is doing with respect to that with respect to default reporting period so it is saying uh, refer to default site wide date so it's going to refer to 1 1 january what's your frequency one year so every year it's going to select january 1 as its reference date the starting pinpoint so what is the pattern start date start of your reference date so this is nothing but uh, when do you want the uh, pattern to start like your accrual pattern to start appearing so that is your uh, accrual sorry uh, that is your uh, pattern start date okay so your uh, reference date is uh, you're going to choose uh, whatever date you want to from your uh, person sorry from your uh, site wide dates or your person specific dates uh, this depends on whatever date pattern you want to create so for example if you want to create uh, something for birthday then you will just uh, select as anniversary and you will create uh, one like say birthday and so it repeats every year right so you'll select some person person dates and you will why is this not appearing? Okay. Now we'll try this again. I'll explain the concepts first. So So this is uh, the page uh, for your new uh, date pattern setup. So you, uh, so date patterns are nothing but uh, their sequence of dates that are going to decide when accrual balances have to be incremented. Like when do you have to update the bucket? Like do, uh, you can do it monthly. So some, some, some accrual codes are monthly, right? Like your annual leave, your sick leave. They, you are, you earn like one and a half days per month, something like that, right? So what is the frequency? So how do you create a date? Uh, how do you say that is your date pattern? Like how often should they uh, get increased is your uh, accruals so based on what type of uh, reference date you select this option gets changed here so for example when you select a pay period your option gets uh, your frequencies get changed so 
for example if you select uh, default site wide date you can uh, select whatever options as the frequency that you want to do here so in site wide days you have uh, so you can select days weeks months years or pay periods for the frequency but if you have a person specific date you have to enter the length of the date pattern or how long uh, how often it occurs like just enter a number and then you have to select the unit of time so this pattern start is the date of the pay period on which to uh, start the date pattern so you have start of reference date which means the uh, pattern starts on the reference date start closest to reference date is the pattern starts on the date that's closest to the reference date so for example if you specify the first of month and the reference date is jan 20 the first date will be february 1 start on or before reference date is the pattern is going to start on the reference date or the closest date after the reference dates for example if your reference date is uh, say the first of january and your reference date is 10 then uh, the uh, then the f no, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. So start on or after the reference date is what I said now. So the pattern starts on the reference date or the closest date after the reference date. So for example, if you specify the first of the month and the reference date is 10, then the first date is going to be February 1 because it's after. So if you want to start on or before the reference date, then the pattern starts on the reference date or the closest date before the reference date. So for example, if you are going to specify uh, say 15th of the month uh, and the reference date is Jan 20 in that case the first date will be uh, Jan 15 so we have some option called offset right so offset is a, this uh, allows the date pattern uh, in a way it can be used to advance or delay the first date of the date pattern so you either have to select before or after and then you will enter a number and a unit of time so you'll either do before or after and then you enter a unit of time so there's something called as full-time equivalency that's generally used by europe so this condition is used um because in europe uh, em contractors must be employed for 40 hours or something so there's a condition like that in uk so majority european countries use this uh, full-time equivalent so the number of hours that a full-time employee is expected to work within the time interval defined by the date pattern the fte that's referred here so that is the definition for this so this value is used for prorating any fixed grants for part-time employees so for example if you specify a date pattern for one pay period the house could be 40 or so so if you specify a monthly date pattern the hours could be 240 right so to calculate any extra hours, the system uses the part-time employees part-time ratio and the number of hours that a full-time employee is expected to work within the specified date pattern okay so that is your uh, date patterns I'll cover balance cascades at the end uh, along with the cascading profiles in the timekeeping so we'll go to probation periods so what your probation period means so probation periods specify when the accrued time or money can be used within a specified time period so there are two controls that determine either uh, that uh, determine the end of either type of probation period so one is stop after i'll just finish probation periods can we connect uh, tomorrow but tomorrow i'll be able to join at 9 9 to 9 what we can do okay